<laughs> Alright, yo, what's up, JD family? It's your boy D Starks. Starks artist. And you're tuned in to the Just a Friend Podcast, yeah. where we talk everything faith, life, and culture. Man, EP23. We here, man. Let's get us tap here. in. Before Let's we tap get into in. it, man, we just want to give a little shout out to Revive General. Quick. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, we had the opportunity to host a little Bible study for them this past Friday, and it, it was a great experience, man. We just want to thank, you know, Esther and Luke and the rest of the team for having us. Uh, we love their ministry. You know, we just want to plug them really quick. Y'all go go check them out and everything. Yeah, so they're actually like an online community uh, for Christians, really like around the world. Yeah. I think we had... Someone for the Philippines on yeah, the Bible study all over the place. Friday, um, and they host Bible studies every month, like with guest speakers that they bring in. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna have all the links to like their socials uh, and their ministry in our description. So make sure to check them out. We're gonna be at the Bible study next month that they're yeah, hosting. Yeah. We're not gonna be speaking or anything, we're but we're just gonna to be, be guests. Yeah. And just because like I don't know, there was something about like being in connection and in fellowship with a body of believers, right? Yeah. Like I, I left there with. I felt my my spirit was fed. Yeah, same if that here. makes sense, same you know here. what I mean. Yeah. I felt lighter. I felt better. And of course, like we were speaking, but even like hearing people's stories, or testimonies, exactly. and you know the discussions that we had were amazing. So yeah, make sure to check. Make sure you check them out for sure. Yeah, you know, much love to everyone at Revive Gen. Y'all tap in. Y'all yeah, tap, tap in. into their ministry. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. Um, so for this EP, actually, we had actually had a set. A topic, um, an issue we really wanted to deal with and talk yeah. talk about and tackle this week, but I was looking at it a few days ago and I was just like, eh, it, it just wasn't it. I was right. really feeling led to go into a different direction, yeah. and so I hit Jordan. I let him know like, yo, I'm, we're transitioning. We're probably gonna change mm-hmm. change it up. And I'm sitting there. I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, God, what's good, right? Like, what, what's the word? What are we talking about? Yeah, and then. I was kind of thinking more on it and, you know, unintentionally, really, the last two episodes that we've had, when you think about, like, your uh, your circle matters mm-hmm. and then dream with God, yeah. we've really been, like, laying the foundation for points of emphasis God's put on our heart this year yeah. and convictions that he's um, really given us um, and really messages that are relevant to, like, everyone connected to us and really the general body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay. Staying in that lane, like, you know, what else is important for this year? Laying the foundation and things that we really need to be focusing on. And then at that point, like, it hit me. It just dropped in my spirit. And something that God's been really hitting home for me and Jordan specifically the past two or three months is the fact that we need to start laying the foundation of the tenets of our faith. Mm. Yeah. And actually understanding our doctrine and what we believe, mm. right? And being able to articulate that to other people and defending the faith. Um, and so as I'm thinking about that, I remember it. I was scrolling through Facebook, y'all. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> don't, ask, don't look. Facebook. Don't, don't, <laughs> chill. Don't ask me how I was on Facebook. I never get on there, like, ever. Um, but for whatever reason, I was on, I was on Facebook um, a few days ago. And I was scrolling through. And my pastor had made a post. And, you know, it, just, it was just mad confirmation. Mm-hmm. And so this was a big motivation for this episode, actually, and what we're going to be talking about today. But I'm going to read it just verbatim. And it says, most of the American, most of American Christianity in this generation cannot with both conviction and clarity explain to you their doctrinal stance. Most of what we know about church is musical or moment, both necessary. However, without belief, all of that is just a concert because many people have experiences. But the question is, then the question becomes, do you know who or what you had an experience with? So the question is, what do you believe about God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, about you, the Bible, the cross, the second coming, the kingdom, spiritual gifts, healing, deliverance, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the part that stung right here, get a mandate. We know everything about politics, sociology, economics, entertainment, the list goes on, and have no idea the tenets of our own faith. Mm. I submit to you, our problem may be that what we have is not real Christianity, just community gatherings mm. and demons had that much hashtag church dances and dinners are not enough he said, hashtag you need doctrine he said even the demons have that much this community Dang. groupings man so in this episode we're really gonna be talking about growing in like wisdom mm-hmm. knowledge and understanding about like the tenets of our faith which is like subsequently it's going to bring us closer to God and also give us a defense that we can give to the world about like what we actually believe. Exactly. And so the broader topic really what it's going to be really about is apologetics Mm -hmm. and which is simply what that means is being able to defend the faith. Um, Because if we're being honest, if we're looking in the mirror, 
having walking in transparency, a lot of us don't know what we actually believe, mm. right? Like I said, we've been convicted about it even like two months ago. And I was thinking just, just like an internal monologue. And I asked myself the question like, okay, if someone came up to me, asked me the process of salvation, what I know, how to explain that? Yeah. Really, you know what I mean? And if I was yeah. being honest with myself, I'm like, dang, like I really, like, I, like we know. You know. But do I really? Exactly, exactly. Especially if I can't explain it or give it to someone else. Mm. And so like I mentioned earlier, um, in the in the post it says like we know everything about politics media and all these other industries but do we know basic knowledge of our theology yeah we know everything about our degree the sector we work in but if anyone asks you what the process of salvation would you have an answer mm. yeah. could you like coherently explain with confidence what the gospel is because mm. we, we know everything about social media marketing yeah. how to build an audience yeah. audience becoming an influencer if, but if someone came to you and asked you why the Bible can't be trusted, would you have a response? Would you? Would you have a response? So what, so what do you believe, mm. right, about baptism, about sanctification, about revelations and the, end, the coming of the end? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, what do you believe about these different issues? And you have to be able to, like, explain that and have, like, theology balance for it. Because, like, we're living in a culture that believes, like, 30 to 60 second videos is enough mm. to feed our spirit and sustain our faith. Yeah. Right? Because I appreciate your Bible app. That's cool. But I appreciate your hour and a half on Christian TikTok. You feel me? I appreciate the five tweets you like that quoted some Bible verses. Appreciate the IG reel you shared to your story. Yeah, like, that's you know, cool. that, that was pretty encouraging. It was appreciate, motivational. Appreciate you. Appreciate you know. You. But I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But somebody got to be. Jordan, I I, re I really so, do, but somebody has to be. It's not enough. It's not enough. And, and like we always say, there is more. There is more. Yeah. Like so we, we have to have a deeper revelation on our faith and ultimately what we believe. Yeah. Like Darren just been saying, just to reiterate, it's like that's something I've even been convicted on lately. It's like your faith is is great and all, and and that's important, obviously. But it's it's missing a lot of its power if it's lacking the understanding of that faith as well. Mm. You know, like your faith, your faith in God is important. But would you be able to answer someone's question about theirs? Your faith in God is important, but would you be able to defend it, defend it to someone attacking it? You know, what I mean, if the answer to these questions isn't yes, then like some work needs to be done. Facts. Yeah. The the. I think you have to understand the understanding of your faith isn't automatically attached to the belief in it. A lot of us just, it's so funny because I don't know why somehow in my mind I used to think that, oh, if I'm a believer long enough, I'll just, no. I'll just, <laughs> like, if I go to church long enough, I'll just learn everything Fact. I need to learn. But it's like, no, it's, it's not automatically attached. That's something you have to go get. That it takes intentional it. study. Exactly. Bro, say that again? Whoa. I said the understanding of your faith isn't automatically attached to the belief in it. Understanding of your faith is not automatically attached to the belief. It's not. Jeez. You got to be intentional. No, and this is a, something that it's not talked about enough, particularly like in the church. And, you know, when we think about like the culture we live in, just in faith in general, because we have a lot of pastors, ministers and teachers of the word that want to give you motivation, but don't want to give you doctrine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we want messages that are practical in nature, but we don't want me sermons that challenge us. Right. But doctrine is what your life is built on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I think that's a part of the reason. That's what we've a part of like what's been laid on our hearts really heavily is like we don't want to be in a position to where we're just like giving we pats on the back mm. yeah sermons that make you feel good but don't actually transform you yeah. sermons that may motivate you but can't actually change you we want we want to make sure that we're giving words of encouragement and of in teaching the uncompromised word of god but we have a lot of people who are just wanting to make you clap mm. a nice church dance they want to amen out of you but did you grow? Did you change? Did you learn anything? Did you get closer to God? Yeah. And then on our end, we 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 want that, mm -hmm. right? It, it's that it's that. Oh, this is too boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, 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 it's too boring. You we gotta learn and be disciplined enough to sit under good word, yeah. right? Yeah. And and not and not be about being about entertainment, mm -hmm. but growth. Yeah. So it's two it's twofold. Yeah, I think people just lean on the feeling of it too much, mm -hmm. man. It's deep, it's deeper than the feeling. I think like we we've just been saying this whole time. It's like 
it's about the knowledge of it. And there's this um, the scripture in Habakkuk 214. And the scripture says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So in the scripture is saying the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, not not just. So I think it's reiterating that we should not only be concerned with the fear of God or the faith of God filling the earth, but also concerned with the knowledge of him filling the earth because the two and two, like I said earlier, don't go in hand. You know what I mean? Because ultimately it is the knowledge and the understanding of him that does lead to the faith in the first place. Facts. And I was actually going to mention the scripture. Um, it's in Romans ten seventeen, and we're familiar with it, but it says that faith comes from hearing. Yeah. And hearing what? Hearing the word of God, mm -hmm. that your faith, of course, we need experience. Exactly. But like I mentioned earlier, do you know what you just had an experience with? Mm. Of course, we need encounters and those transform transformative moments where the presence of God comes down on us. But can I explain who or what I just had an encounter with and where that came from. Yeah. So both are necessary. We have to make sure that we're being more intentional about that. Like, cause our faith is, is built upon the understanding of it, of different topics and the theological foundations. Yeah. And I was sitting down thinking about this. Usually let me know your thoughts about this. I was thinking like, I think an obstacle or an obstacle for a lot of people who grew up in the church is that they develop that faith in those experiences before they ever really truly understand what it meant. You know what I mean? Like, for example, since I grew up in church, like, I was believing in a God that I didn't really understand. You know what mm. I mean? And it's like, for people who didn't necessarily have that um, that background growing up, it's like they had to, to a certain extent. They had to ask more questions. Exactly. And we, we kind of talked about it in Dream with God, but mm -hmm. like that faith, which can lead to like this this hyper extended mm. or hyper sensitive faith that can lead to Oh, I, I think I know it all. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I've come, I've come into enough knowledge and information about this, or you just get comfortable, mm. right? Yeah. So yeah, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That's fire. Yeah. So I was just thinking, just a note for people out there: if you grow up in the church, like that's just something you have to watch out for, because like I said, when you when you grow up in the church, you kind of just get this, you know, this idea that you, like I, I figure it out. Yeah. I, I've, I've kind of learned it. You know what I mean? Like we always say, um, by grace through faith. Mm. But what does that actually mean? Exactly. You know, I mean, we take these like phrases and different like theological principles yeah. and ideas that we hear from the pulpit, but we never actually go and study them and examine them for ourselves. Exactly. And especially like after years and years of hearing it, you kind of think or have this false sense of security and in information you know about it. Exactly. That makes a lot of exactly. sense. Yeah. And this is another thing and a real highlight of what I really wanted to say and what. So this is another thing and a highlight of what I really wanted to mention about this entire topic. And it's the fact that. In this culture that we live in, this is so important because in the culture that we live in today, in the spiritual battles we're fighting, when you think about the heresy mm. that's rising within the earth and false teachers oh, and preachers yeah. that are running rampant, that's a good point. you cannot afford not to know what you believe. You can't. And we say that with so much urgency, and I mean this, like, please take that away. You cannot afford not to know what you believe because mm. you have you have the world trying to push you away from the God and the foundation you're building your life on. But you also have people in the church mm. that claim to know him that are trying to twist his word and his scripture for their own agenda yep. to their own preference. Yep. So you have to be very aware and have a knowledge of it for yourself so you can identify these things because you're going to have so many different people trying to persuade you in different areas and different thoughts of what they think it means and not what it actually is in like interpreted by the Bible. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? It's like if you don't know what you believe, they'll create it for you, you know? And it's like what's that scripture? Is that in Romans? It talks about how like the sheep's in wolves uh wolf wolves clothing or wolves mm. and sheep. Well, how's it, how's it? Like yeah. Yeah, so it's just like you got to watch out for the people who are, you know, dressed as sheep, you know what I mean, but they're really wolves, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Yes, that's so good because that's a, that's when I come because you don't it's crazy. Like we have people out here who think that are claiming like Jesus was a homosexual that 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 like baptism is a requirement for salvation that all these different things and all these different doctrines and theologies and you have to understand know what you believe exactly exactly you have to know it and because it's twofold because you have to be able to give a defense to other people but also defend your faith 
to church to the church mm, yeah to to people in the body that may have mm. error in their doctrine and exactly. what they believe exactly. right and what we're not saying disclaimer here we're not talking about you don't have to be a theologian no you, don't. you know what I mean? you don't have to be some person that like went through seminary and it's like have this profound and like master understanding or knowledge about the complete bible or anything but there are basic tenets of the faith, like we mentioned, that you have to understand. So when we talk about baptism, when we talk about salvation, when we yeah. talk about what the gospel is, when we talk about why can the Bible be trusted, mm-hmm. when we when we talk about sanct- the process of sanctification, when we talk about the end times and things of that nature, you these are things that you have to be at least very well acquainted with for yourself, more importantly, like above all. Exactly. Um, but also so you are, are able to give that defense to other people. Yeah, no, exactly. I remember I used to think... <laughs> It's kind of funny thinking about it. I used to think like, oh, I'll leave it to the professionals. Like there's like Ooh. professional Christians. You know what I mean? Like there's professional Facts. Christians. That's what I used to think. Like, oh, I'll leave it to the people. Like people go to college for that. Like, you know, I'll leave it to the preachers. Like, no, that's that's on you as well. That's you fact. I mean? That's so that good. Knowledge. Yeah, it's on you. And I, that's perfect. I wanted to mention the scripture as well. And when we mentioned this, we talked about this episode is going to be a little bit really more about like apologetics. And basically all that means um, in its essence is defending the faith. It's yeah. the study and or the process of understanding how to defend the faith. Mm-hmm. And it really stemmed from this verse in First Peter 3.15. Um, and it says, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. So right here, this is a general address and command and statement to all Christians that you need to be, you have to always be prepared to give a defense for anyone to ask you, okay, why do you, why do you believe? Yep. Why, why, why is your religion the true one? Mm. Out of all of these, right? How did you come to this one? Yeah. How do you know that this is valid? How do you know that this is truth? Why did you build your life upon this? Being, you have to be able to give a defense always. You have to be prepared. It says this, and I think I have a philosophy that, by definition, I believe everyone is an apologist and an evangelist. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And what I mean by that is, you may not hold the office or position of that, but by definition, their task is what you are called to be. Mm. So, for example, an evangelist, we can see that. And the great commission that God gives every Christian to go out into all the world and what proclaim and preach the gospel. That's the role that evangelists walk in. And when it comes to being an apologist, we see this right here in first Peter three 15, that we all, every one of us has to be prepared to give a defense for the hope we have in God. Yeah. So by definition, we all hold these positions and have to be equipped and and intentional about equipping ourselves to be able to walk into these things because that's it's what we're commanded to do yeah and i even want to put a lot of emphasis and i think it's good that you put an emphasis on in that scripture it says you need to always be prepared to Mm. get that defense and i think a place where i went wrong is i got satisfied with the knowledge that i gained like i i had learned a certain to up to a certain point i feel like this is enough you know Mm. what i mean like i've learned enough and i and i became too satisfied but i think that's dangerous because you got to understand, like, the knowledge of God is inexhaustible, bro. Inexhaustible. I can read a verse one day, read it again in another couple of weeks, and get something totally Completely different, different from it. So it's, it's 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 inexhaustible. So you have to make sure it's a, it's a continual process. It's not like a I get my defense this one time and I'm good for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to continue to gain that knowledge. And sharpen, your, sharpen yourself in the Word of God. Exactly. And another scripture we wanted to mention is 2 Timothy 2.15. Um, and it says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Mm. And another version of it says, make sure you study to show yourself approved. Yep. A worker who has no, no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. So study to show yourself approved before God. Yep. And so you need, you know, like I said, it's kind of going back to this being a mandate for all of us. And it's something that we don't really talk about a lot because it's it's boring. Yeah. Right. Un- understanding like theology and like the and, and the core fundaments of okay, what what is the Bible? What does it mean? And all of that. It's not like a a very entertaining message, yeah. but it's something that we all need to know. One, like I said, one to our own benefit and bringing us closer to God more importantly, and then we have to be able to give that to other people, right? So, for example, I, I'm a firm believer that Jesus is the standard. 
Yep. Right. Jesus is the standard for everything. When we think about preaching, teaching, evangel- evangelism, all of it, we have to look at his life and what he did mm-hmm. and what emulate ourselves to be like that, to be like Christ. Yeah. And when you think about his ministry, when you're looking through the Gospels, what was Jesus doing? A part of what he was doing was obviously healing the sick, mm-hmm. right? Opening 100%. blind eyes, yeah. casting out demons, yeah. preaching the gospel. But he was also defending the faith to what the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Yeah. Yeah. They were coming at him like, what, you have, you have a kingdom? What is that? And what he he he's bro, he's spitting, bro. You know what I mean? He's coming back with scriptures. He's yeah, quoting Moses. Talking, he's quoting yeah. David. You see that through, in a, throughout his entire ministry, right? And in that same way that he was presented with these false doctrines and these religious people, we are too. Mm. We're gonna be presented with a what twenty first century Pharisee. Yep. Of oh, no, you you it, you gotta um you gotta work to get your way to heaven. Mm. No, no, God God really didn't mean that. What have to do with it? No, no, Christianity, it changes with the time. It, it's it's progressive. I've heard that one. The Pharisee of this time, in the, in the same way Jesus defended the faith, we need to be equipped to do the same. Yeah. We have to be. And I think even talking with this, this parallel between, like, you know, the Pharisees and Jesus, I think you see two extremes with it. You see people who have faith in something that they can't defend, but then you have people who can defend something that they don't really have faith for. Mm. But the two are meant to go hand in hand. Like we've been saying this whole conversation, you need to find the balance because we are talking about, you know, the apologetics, being able to have that knowledge and information of the faith, but making sure you're you're not having too much knowledge and getting away from, you know what I mean, the faith of it and ha- having the balance between the two. In terms of like knowledge and experience is what it like. Yeah, I knowledge, think, exactly. In ter- exactly. What you're talking about, because there's a lot of people who encounter God, experience him on Sunday, yeah. but don't actually know him. Right. Right. And there's people who can tell you everything about the Bible. It's cover his, to cover. Cover to cover. It's history. It's it's framework when it was made, who has made the versions and revisions it's been through, but I've never actually had an experience with the word itself. Yep. Just knowledge of it. So like even that post I originally said, both are necessary. Right. Right. But we can't put you know, be putting necessarily one more emphasis on one thing than the yeah. other. And that's where I think we're at. And it's a it's a mm. it's a dangerous place. You know what I mean? Because we're just we're, you know, we're coming to church every Sunday and we're looking at the YouTube videos and the social media pastors. And of course, it's necessary and it's effective, but we need more. We need more death. Right. Because, you know, as you as you grow and mature, you need more to sustain you. Exactly. And mm, that's good. My, my concern is, Jordan, is that we're 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 trying to live on like crumbs. You know what I mean? Like we're we're yeah. we're. We're grown to do- We wonder why, like, we're withering in our faith. We're not as strong or bold or have the the discipline and self-control against sin. And it's because, like, we're full-grown Christians, what, sipping on milk. Mm, yeah. And it's not, it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough. We have to have that basis of, like, yo, I know what I believe. This is what I stand on. This is what my life is built upon, and this is not going to be shaken. Yeah. And that's what it, what's going to give us, one, that confidence and the strength to get through what the battles we face day to day and even, like, the, the sin that may try and, like, in, in, like entrap us. Yeah. It's funny you bring up that analogy about the breadcrumbs. It reminds me of this analogy. I was watching um, uh, Pastor Bob Evans. Is that is his name? Yeah. <laughs> Tony? I said, Bob. I was thinking about the food spot. I was thinking about the food spot. No way. Tony Evans. I was watching Tony Evans, and he brought up this analogy. He was talking about how, you know how you go to, like, a fast food spot or a place, like, you know, with food that isn't necessarily the best for you. Yeah. And then you order, like, a Diet Coke. And it's like, what's the point? Because you're feeding yourself all this bad stuff, and then you think it's going to cancel out with a Diet Coke. And he was talking about how we're living in this, like, Diet Coke Christianity, where people go to church on Sundays thinking that's enough to fill them up, and then they go the entire week eating things that aren't good for them, and they cancel out. So like you were saying, it's like, that's not a, that's not enough to disdain, sustain your diet. You know what I mean, you're a full-blown Christian. It's going to take more than that. Yeah, that's so I, good. You know, that bro. reminded me of that analogy. I was like, because when you said that, I was like, yeah, that's tough. Yeah, like, bro. That's what tough, diet that's coke Christianity? Diet coke Christianity, bro. Jesus. Diet coke faith. Diet coke faith. We can't. We can't. No more. No more. No more diet coke faith. Yeah, that's it right there, yo. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, that's a bar. But, um, no, yeah. Did you have, like, any anything else? Or, like, in terms of practical stuff, right? Like, yeah, so yeah. We're, we're talking big game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why it's so important. 
Um, but obviously, we want to leave you all with some things. Sometimes that are going to actually help you. Okay, like what what do I need to do to understand the tenets of my faith? What does that look like? What does that mean? You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Aside from the the basics, obviously, obviously, which is getting in your word, yeah. point blank, period. I think aside from that, some things that helped me were watching like different like theological debates and stuff that I like to do mm-hmm. or watching like Jubilee videos. You know the videos they have of like no, know, the Christians fire. versus non-Christians. I think this helped because... I think our faith causes us to be blind to certain questions we wouldn't think to ask. Uh, so I think, bro, 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 say it again. Say it. say it again, please. I think our faith causes us to be blind to certain questions we wouldn't think to ask, uh, like in the first place. So I think it's important to hear other people's perspectives, especially people who don't believe what you believe. So I think when I was watching these Jubilee videos and hearing of like what atheists and agnostics had to say, I was like, okay, like these are good questions. I never even would have thought to like think no, so i think um that's some advice for people like watch those ju- jubilee videos about you know the christians and stuff and theological debates just to hear like other people's perspectives yeah and i and we don't, i don't want to get too much into this because we're gonna do another ep on it but you have to expand yourself outside your circle of comfort and who you interact with right in yeah. terms of not just always talking to christians yeah. you know what i mean you need to have other conversations with people who don't have faith because like you said that's what i found myself like especially in my junior year when i was first coming to christ and people were giving me questions i would i was for the first like a question about my faith it was the first time i realized it sounds so goofy but it was like dang People haven't grown up in this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you, like that's that's such a simple revelation. But you have to realize there are people who, from literally out of the womb up until right now, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, have not had a basis of faith. Yeah. So you have to be empathetic and put yourselves in those shoes, because like you said, we become blind to questions other people may have because we we're content. Yeah. We've all it's what we've grown up. It's all we've known. So it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, it's mm-hmm. easier for us to like fall into the idea. Like when, even when you think about and I mentioned this before, like I think I mentioned this before the story of creation. Mm-hmm. Right. Like that's a pretty big claim that you're telling me a God that we never have don't really have origin of comes down, makes man out of dirt, takes dude's rib, <laughs> makes a woman, <laughs> then puts dude in a, a garden yeah. where they don't got no clothes on. You know what I mean? Like when you really think about it from an other unbeliever's perspective, exactly. it's like, wow. Like, okay, I can understand why that wouldn't make, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can understand why that wouldn't make no sense. And it's important sense. also not to get offended by people's questions. Because mm. like you said, if you really step outside of what you've known for so long and you really look at it from someone else's perspective, it's like, okay, I get why this doesn't make sense. Facts. So like, make sure you're not really getting too offended when people are like asking you these questions. No, 100%. I think that's good. So first, really first tip of advice is like, you know, expanding your knowledge yeah. and your experience of other people. Uh, in their questions that's going to give you like a base and then i would say um uh even like getting different like uh books that are like geared toward apologetics specifically in terms Mm -hmm. of defending the faith and even different study bibles that are going to uh, walk you through because right now I actually just got one. Um, yeah. It's the CSV Apologetic Study Bible, and it literally has the questions of like, okay, why can we trust the Bible? Why does God allow evil things to happen? Or you know, the story of creation. It takes you through like um, defenses that you can give to this faith, and why, and gives you reference to biblical um, principles and obviously verses that are in the Bible that back this up. And so that's always good to do, like really, really practically. Um, is getting those books like On Guard. Um, by Craig, um, crap, I can't remember his name. Like different, but getting different books as well. I know. Yeah, one I, mean, that's, I don't mean to interrupt. Let me. Uh, I wanted to plug a book real quick because I think when I started getting to apologetics, this was a book that helped me. It's, it's called um, Letters from a Skeptic. Mm. And it's basically um, a book about how this guy was getting letters from someone and he was just asking him questions about his faith. And I think it was really good because it was just addressing them a lot of questions that a lot of people have. So letter, letters from a skeptic. No, fact. I'm going to give you guys On Guard by William Craig. We'll link these. And also a lot of different books by C.S. Lewis um, that I've that I've read. Um, but yeah, study Bibles, particular books that are geared toward it is really going to help because it lays it out for you. It literally asks, it gives you the question that most people will ask and then it, you know, walks you through the process of, okay, like how to approach this yeah. and how to answer this and the Bible verses that point to it, um, which I think is like super important. Mm. But you got uh, anything else? Oh yeah, there's a scripture I wanted to give. Um, John seventeen three, it says, now this is eternal life that they know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And the emphasis that I want to put on this is it says that they know you, 
not that they know of you, not that they hear of you, but that but that they know you, the only true God. So yes, it, it is saved by grace through faith, but I want to emphasize that the importance of knowing him, understanding him, you know, what he did for you, why you believe, what you believe, and not only for others, but for yourself. So um, yeah, that's just the takeaway I got from that scripture. So I want to leave you. Over. Yeah, and so like obviously, obviously, when you're approaching the word itself and you're getting knowledge, you don't want to get in the habit or in, like at all of just getting going to the word to get a message for other people, right? Mm-hmm. You want to make sure ultimately your heart's in the right place and you're getting closer to God. But you know, being more intentional about having those those defenses for other people, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Because I don't believe that we're not knowledgeable. But we just need to be more intentional about the knowledge that we have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, like I asked myself, okay, what's the process of salvation? Well, okay, I know how to, exp- I know it in my mind, mm-hmm. but I can't, you know what I mean? It was like at that, at that moment, I know it in my mind, but it's like, okay, what is it really? So yeah, but now I can actually tell you what that means. And I can point to scriptures like Romans 10, 10, that says like, you need to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus mm-hmm. is Lord yeah. and under, and taking people through that process, letting them know that that's a point of access mm-hmm. that I'm giving God what my life and my heart and what that means. Like I can give you that now, but you know, two months ago, if I was being honest with myself, it was like, ah, uh, I couldn't even give you a verse. You know what I mean? It was just like, it was just, <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> it was just stuff I always heard. And like we said, yeah. we just take it for granted. Um, so yeah, just being more intentional about the knowledge we have, and that's really what we wanted to talk about is like defending the faith and understanding doctrine, not just you know motivational messages that are like great talking about different things and general topics, but understanding the faith yeah. at the basic level, mm. the pillars of the faith. Exactly. Um, and so yeah, that because like I said earlier, it's important and it's on the heart of God because of the culture we're living in. Exactly. You know, I think maybe you know, fifty years ago, you know, our parents or grandparents could got get away with more of not yeah. understanding it, and even then, they still needed it. But now, more than ever, more than ever, man, more than ever, you have to know. You have to. You have to like and like seriously, I mean that you have mm-hmm. to know. So, you know. We just wanted to mention that. You got anything else for the people? Anything you want to leave them with? Uh, no, I just think it was a good point you were saying how, like, um, we know it, but it's just putting your thoughts to words is a whole different type of animal. So I think just an exercise that I ha- try to practice and I you know, suggest other people to is try to, like, out loud, like, literally say your answers. Like, it sounds kind of goofy, but, like, out loud, if someone were to ask me this, what would I say to them? It's like, you know it, but, like I said, putting your thoughts to words is a whole different animal. So that's just... Um, you know, a little, a little, another little practical tip for people. But yeah, that's all. That's all I got. What, what you got? No, yeah. So I would just say that this is something that's definitely, as we, you know, continue to mention that it is on the heart of God, on the mind of God, and something that we don't talk about enough, but something that needs we have to practice. We have to put to application and make sure we're being intentional about. It. It's not an inter- entertaining message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Y'all's probably yawning through this one, yeah, but y'all might dozing off at the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It's so necessary, and honestly, I think it's one of the most important parts, if not the most important part of our faith in general, Um, because the question just becomes, do you really know him? And larger than that, do you know what you believe? Do you? Or is it just secondhand information, secondhand experiences, secondhand messages from what you've heard or what other people have told you about him or why this is true or why it's not, but you have to know him personally yep. and have a doctrine for yourself on what you believe on different issues because it's it shapes it shapes everything it does it shapes how you see god how you operate in the world and ultimately what you teach other people and so it 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 shapes everything so it must be a part of a large part of what we do yeah. and our priority yeah um period so yeah we're challenging you all like throughout this year it's like get closer to him Mm -hmm. like that's it and understand these tenets and you know be able to give a defense because that's what it's all about like because if we're called to be world changers right people Mm -hmm. who are supposed to affect the culture and impact different sectors of life then we have to be ready for that we have to we have to make sure that we're equipped and i don't think we have to have a shift in who we are you know what i mean and take it more seriously that hey like i am you know a representation of Christ. Exactly. When someone encounters me, they have an opportunity to enter the kingdom. So I yeah. have to. I always have to be on guard and prepared. Yeah. And once you truly adapt that title, you'll act accordingly. Hmm. 
So yeah, I guess fire. That's tough. Act accordingly. Act accordingly, man. That's all we got. But hey, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what's up. Stay you, stay, stay real, real, and stay humble. We'll catch y'all next week. Much love.